presiding officer. This week, the government rejected amendments to the Gender Recognition Reform Bill that would have stopped those awaiting trial for a sexual offence from changing gender. The amendment from Michelle Thompson, supported by Russell Finlay, would have prevented the situation where a survivor of rape would have to refer to their rapist as she. This amendment was not directed at trans people. It would not limit trans rights. It was solely intended to stop male criminals from inflicting more trauma on their victims. Michelle Thompson said in this chamber on Tuesday that leaving this as a possibility risked handing power to abusers. She said that the government is choosing to put the rights of alleged criminals over the rights of victims. The government stopped that amendment by a single vote. The First Minister's own vote means that a man standing trial for rape can claim they're a woman and force a victim to call them she. Why did the First Minister vote for this? First Minister. Presiding officer, where amendments uh, were rejected over the course of the last two days, it was because a majority in this parliament, having listened carefully and respectfully to the arguments, uh, decided that for a variety of reasons, uh, those amendments uh, were not uh, appropriate and Parliament has uh, gone through that process uh, over the past two days as is right and proper. Um, over the course of the last two days, uh, we have heard set out in this chamber uh, many of the different ways uh, in which predatory men can abuse women. Uh, my argument is not, and it has never been and never will be, uh, that these are not very real ways in which predatory men abuse uh, women. Uh, my argument is that none uh, of these ways are created by this bill, yeah. um, and nor uh, would it be the case that any of these ways are addressed by denying rights to trans yeah. uh, people. Uh, the fact of the matter is, a man who wants to abuse a woman, um, even a man who wants to masquerade as a woman in order to do so, does not need a gender recognition certificate to do that, um, and nor does having a gender recognition certificate uh, give that man any more uh, ability or rights uh, to do that uh, than is currently the case. What we must focus on uh, are the men who abuse women, the predatory and abusive men who do that, um, and this government always will in a range of different ways. Uh, where amendments were rejected over the course of the last two days, it was often the case uh, that that was because there were alternative amendments uh, that were passed to strengthen safeguards in this bill, but amendments that were compliant in the view of the government with ECHR and uh, competence issues uh, in a way that some of those rejected were not. So, for example, um, in terms of sex offenders, amendments by Shona Robinson and Gillian Martin uh, Briefly, were agreed please, uh, by Parliament. So, these have been serious issues, seriously considered by this Parliament, as is right and proper. Douglas Ross. Well, we supported those amendments, but they were weaker than the amendment from Michelle Thompson. Roddy Dunlop the Dean of the Faculty of Advocates in Scotland said of Gillian Martin's amendment, it will not prevent harm, it will reduce the risk of harm. And on ECHR, Roddy Dunlop also said on that vote, I can conceive of no sensible basis on which this amendment might be rejected. That's from the, faculty, the head of the Faculty of Advocates in Scotland. But the First Minister's point here seems to be that this won't happen that there's no chance that a violent, predatory male will ever try to exploit loopholes to attack or further traumatise women. But what if that does happen? Why would any of us leave the possibility that that could happen? One offence like that is one too many. Stopping an accused sex offender from changing gender is common sense. What is it? that the First Minister and half of this Parliament thought was right to leave open the chance that that could happen? First Minister. Well, firstly, uh, it is not my position, and I didn't say and have never said, that predatory men uh, will not seek to abuse women. My argument is 
that it is not this bill that creates the opportunities yeah. for them to do so. Yeah. These opportunities, unfortunately, uh, exist already, and it's those that we have to tackle. Nor would not passing this bill remove the opportunities for predatory men to seek to do that. And the reasons for the rejection of these particular amendments um, and the alternative amendments that were put forward have been set out to this Parliament over the course of the debate in the last two days, and a majority in, in the Parliament has taken a decision. That's how our parliamentary democracy operates. Uh, now, let me set out again exactly uh, what the position as a result of those amendments uh, that were accepted is. Uh, and let me firstly remind the Chamber that we have in place already uh, current provisions for the management of sex offenders that are robust. Um, but we have already, indeed before stage three, uh, given the commitment to expand the reporting requirements uh, to include notification about an application uh, for gender recognition. And the amendments by Shona Robinson and by Gillian Martin, and of course agreed by a majority of this parliament at stage three, further strengthen that. So these will mean that no further action can be taken on a GRC application where the police have applied for a sexual offences prevention order, sexual harm prevention order or sexual risk order that would prevent a GRC application. Um, and it's also my final point, presiding officer. These are safeguards uh, in this legislation that don't exist in the current Sorry. gender recognition legislation. Yeah. Because an important point that is often lost in this debate, because when you listen to this debate, it sometimes sounds as if this bill is you know, either inventing trans people or creating for the first time a process by which somebody can legally change their gender. It is not. That process exists. And these safeguards that I have just set out don't exist in the current law, but they will exist in this new legislation. Dr. Strauss. The First Minister speaks about majority votes, but we know on Michelle Thompson's amendment it came down to just one vote. And at First Minister's questions, I'm asking the First Minister about her one vote, because that amendment simply asked to pause the period that people can apply to uh, have their gender changed if they are on trial for such serious offences. What was the problem with just pausing that opportunity for someone when they are on trial for such a serious offence? And it seems to be the First Minister has not taken the people of Scotland with her on these issues. Polling shows that a majority of Scots are firmly against key parts of this bill. A majority oppose reducing the time applicants must have lived in their acquired gender from two years to six months, and a majority oppose removing the requirement for a doctor's diagnosis of gender dysphoria. That includes a majority of Conservative voters, but crucially it also includes a majority of Liberal Democrat voters, mm -hmm. Labour voters and SNP voters. Lowering the age threshold for a gender recognition certificate was the most opposed aspect of this bill. Two thirds were against it, and again this included 63% of SNP voters, 67% of Labour voters and 75% of Liberal Democrats. Despite this, all three parties are backing the bill today. So why does the First Minister and her allies in this chamber believe they know better than the public? First Minister. Um, we could all point to different polls on this issue. I could point to polls showing very strong support for uh, what this bill is doing, including very strong support amongst uh, women across this country. But fundamentally, and perhaps this is a point of agreement uh, with Douglas Ross, all of us are elected to this parliament and all of us have a very serious responsibility to make decisions and to be accountable for those decisions. Uh, at stage one, we will take the stage three uh, vote on this bill later this afternoon. But at stage one, uh, this bill was supported by members across every party in this chamber, including uh, some members uh, of Douglas Ross's party and all of us will be accountable for the decisions we take on this bill as we are accountable for all the decisions we take here. That is democracy and I uh, stand by the decisions I take and I will be accountable uh, and I will set out the reasons for my decisions uh, to people across Scotland uh, on this and on every other issue. Removing the need for medical diagnosis uh, for a trans person who wants to legally change their gender 
is actually one of the purposes of this legislation, because the need for that is one of the most uh, intrusive, traumatic and dehumanising parts of the current system. And I believe I've been, you know, and uh, as a woman, I know very much what it is like to live with the fear at times uh, of potential violence from uh, men. Uh, I'm a feminist. Uh, I will argue for women's rights. I will do everything I can to protect women's rights for as long as I live. But I also think it's an important part of my responsibility to make life a little bit easier for stigmatised minorities yeah, yeah, in our country, yeah, to make their lives absolutely. a bit better and to remove some of the trauma uh, that they live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it is important to do that for the tiny minority of trans people uh, in our society. And I will never apologise for trying to spread equality, not reduce it uh, in our country. <laughs> Finally, presiding officer. Briefly, First Minister. To, finally, to come back to uh, the, the starting uh, question uh, from Douglas Ross in, in that latest question. The reasons for not accepting Michelle Thompson and Russell Finlay's uh, amendments yesterday were set out at length by Shona Robison because we consider, having carefully considered them, that they would not have been compatible uh, with the European Convention on Human Rights, which all of our legislation has to be and therefore uh, would have potentially compromised uh, the bill. And therefore, we sought an alternative way of achieving the same objectives. And that is what I have set out already. Douglas Ross. Let's be very clear. We supported uh, Gillian Martin's amendment, but it was weaker. It is weaker than Michelle Thompson's. And we had an opportunity in this parliament and the First Minister's vote could have made a difference to strengthen that element. Uh, but let's also be clear that the public are not against improvements to support trans people. Yeah. They are against this bill. The problem is not reform. The problem is the First Minister's reforms. While there may be a majority in this chamber later today to support this legislation, a majority of the public oppose the bill, including most SNP, Labour and Liberal Democrat voters. This bill reduces women's rights and potentially risks women's safety, but it doesn't need to be this way. So let me ask the First Minister and all the Labour, Liberal Democrat and SNP members who support it, shouldn't they take the time to get this right instead of charging ahead with a bill that the people of Scotland do not support. First Minister. This is a bill that has been six years in the making. There have been two uh, full consultations. Um, today it will be the culmination of a, a full uh, and robust legislative process. In the last two days alone, we've had what presiding officer, I think, around 20 hours of debate on amendments. This is possibly the most scrutinised piece of legislation in the history of this parliament. The issue here, presiding officer, and I say this entirely respectfully, is not the lack of scrutiny. It is that the majority in this parliament, made up of members from all parties, including uh, members in Douglas Ross's party have respectfully disagreed with the arguments the Tories uh, have put forward. And many of these arguments uh, have been completely unrelated yeah. to the purpose and effect right. of this bill. That is the reality. Now, Douglas Ross says he's not opposed to reform, he's just opposed to this bill. Well, I've listened very carefully, uh, not just in the last two days, but throughout this debate. I have not heard, I don't think, uh, from Douglas Ross at any time any explanation or any sense of what form of bill he would have been prepared to support. Because I suspect Douglas Ross would have voted against this bill regardless of what amendments had Absolutely. been proposed yeah, to it. Now, that is his right, presiding officer. I've heard, I think, and I'll be corrected if I'm wrong about this, but I think I've heard Douglas Ross uh, say that in the past, had he been in this parliament when we had considered equal marriage, he would have voted against that, but has yeah. since changed his mind all of us have to consider these things carefully. Um, I have thought very, very, very deeply about all of these issues for a long time, and I will be accountable for the decisions I make on this bill in this parliament. I will always stand up for women's rights, uh, but I am proud of the fact that I hope this afternoon parliament will vote for a piece of legislation that will make the lives of trans people in this country that little bit better and easier. And I think that's actually something to be proud of. Question number two, Anna Sarwar.